So now news has came out that Lauren Boebert got so drunk at a Christmas party that she got cut off. And she tried to take selfies with Donald Trump to the point that his own security team had to lead her away. Just another humiliating moment for Lauren Boebert, and that actually took place only three months after her whole Beetlejuice Theater handjob incident. Now, every time I've ever sat down in a chair to talk about Lauren Boebert, I always take it from the angle of, hey, evangelicals, hey, Christians, this lady's out here telling people to chase Jesus and being a total hypocrite about it. And it's obvious to point out the hypocrisy in the fact that she tries to come off like she's the spokeswoman for Christianity, and yet she lives a life that is nothing like it. And that's always an easy angle to take, and it's always a fair question to ask. But for this one, I got to thinking from a completely different line of thought, and I said to myself, when is someone going to finally intervene? When is someone going to have an intervention with Lauren Boebert and say, you know what, Lauren, you've went too far. You've humiliated yourself too far. You've humiliated the Republican Party. You've humiliated Christianity. Hell, you've humiliated this whole country enough. Enough's enough. It's time for you to go seek help. When, when is someone going to do that for Lauren Boebert? Because we know the evangelicals aren't going to do it. We know they don't have standards. We know they will sell their standards out there, and they would put Charles Manson out there if he was still with us. They'd put Charles Manson out there as their spokesperson if he would go along with their bullshit and push their propaganda. So they're not going to come to a raid. The Republican Party's not going to step in because as long as she will appeal to that base, they're cool with it. So when is the time going to come that someone close to Lauren who cares about her steps in and says, you know what, enough is enough. You know, Mike Tyson's going to be fighting Jake Paul here in a few months. And I'm sure wherever we fall on the political argument, we could all agree that we want to see Tyson KO Jake Paul. But Tyson's last professional fight, not the Roy Jones Jr. one, that was an exhibition, but the, but the one back in 05 with Kevin McBride. Kevin McBride was a fighter that Mike Tyson would have knocked out in the first round in any other time of his life, but he was past his prime. He was in a very dark place in his life at that point. And when he was interviewed at the end of that fight, he quit on the stool. And when he was interviewed about it, he said, you know what? I don't want to humiliate myself or the sport of boxing any further. So when is Lauren Boebert going to come to that realization? And if she doesn't come to that realization, then when is someone going to step in and intervene on her behalf and say, Lauren, you've hit the wall. Enough's enough. Because she's low-hanging fruit for people like us. I mean, if you're having a slow news day and you can't figure out what to react to, Lauren Boebert's going to say something. She's doing something that you can always talk about. She is constantly humiliating herself in public. And it just keeps getting worse. And no one's going to step in. Is anyone ever going to step in? That's my question. I never will forget when my dad had to intervene with me. I got to thinking about that. And it's not an easy thing to think about or talk about. But I've always said that from the year 2005 to 2012, that's my missing years. I've al I always refer to that block of my life as the missing years. Seven years of my life where I don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember the music I played for some reason. I remember the songs I wrote. Some of them. I found some that I forgot I wrote, but for the most part, I remember the good ones anyway. I remember certain gigs that I played, and I remember certain major events in my life that happened. But the other day, my daughter sent me a video of a wedding that I don't even remember I went to. It was from 2009, and I was like, that's me? Oh, it doesn't even look like me. I don't even remember being there. Where was that at? Oh, we were here. Oh, really? We was at that church? I don't ever remember stepping in that church. Yeah, I'm sitting there looking presentable. I guess I pulled myself together enough that day to go to that, but I didn't even remember when it happened or who it was. Had no had no no recollection of it whatsoever. In 2012, I finally just slammed straight into the wall one night. I just I just completely hit the wall. Completely came com unglued. Did it on a stage in front of a whole bunch of people. The next morning, I said to myself when I woke up from my fog, I was like, you know, maybe just maybe if I can get back on stage, I can everybody will forget about it. If I can go out there and redeem myself tonight, everybody will for, for, forgive me for that and we'll move forward. And I remember waking up going, all right, if I can just, if I can just pull my, I realized I'd hit the wall. I knew I had crashed hard, but I, I was in the back of my mind, I'm still trying to rally and I'm still trying to be like, hey, you know what? I, I think I can do it. If I can just get back out there, you know, I can do it. And I never will forget when I came out of my room and I walked down the hall, my dad was at the end of the hallway and he intervened to say, yeah, we've been sitting here calling some places for you to go check into. You're, you're going to have to check in. You've, you've got a major problem. And I was like, you know, I was like, I got, I got a gig tonight, and I don't want to miss this gig, and I've never missed gigs. I don't want to do that. I was like, look, I'll go. I won't drink as much. I won't take any pills. I won't touch nothing like that. 
I might just have a few beers to, to loosen me up to get on stage and that'll be it. You can drive me, you can bring me home, you can make sure nothing happens. And he's like, no, no, you've, you've, you slammed right straight into the wall. There's, there's no coming back from this one, Brando. This is it. You, you, you've got to face up to this. And I remember that realization sinking in of like, yeah, he, he's right. You know, I, I have to. And there was no denying that he was right. And I thank him for that today because if he hadn't had that conversation with me back in 2012, Tennessee Brando doesn't exist. I'm not sitting here in this chair talking to you. Because I'm sure I could have went back and I could have rallied that night. I could have rallied. I could have pulled myself together. Mike could have had one or two beers the entire night and walked around proud of myself. But I had a problem. And that problem wasn't going away. That problem's never went away, to be brutally honest with you. I still struggle to this day with it. I still struggle with my cravings. I still struggle. My biggest struggle is in the morning time when I wake up. Because used to, if I woke up from a rough night, I would reach over and take a Xanax or a Valium and I would put myself back to sleep for a while. And so that's my biggest, that's my, that's the biggest hurdle I've always had to get over, uh, is that one. That's the, that's the toughest one. Um, but I still remember, I still remember that day, that realization of, yep, you got to get help. And I remember my dad stepping in and saying, you've got to get help. And so Lauren Bobert needs help. She is a complete embarrassment. To, you know, it's, it's humiliating herself. And I could sit here and I could point to all the obvious. I could point to the evangelicals giving her a pass for it. I could point to the hypocrisy all day long. I could point to the stupidity all day long. But man, like how many times are we going to sit here and, and, and report on this and talk about it? And it really, if, 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 th, th, I mean, go back and look through my videos and she's always somebody that, that you can reach over and, and pull from because she's always making a fool of herself in some way, shape, or form. And they will just keep pushing her out there. The Republican Party and the evangelicals are no different than the people who kept trying to push me onto a stage and kept trying to inject me with as much chemicals as they could to get me through another gig. When you, when you finally do break away from those things, you have to break away from that crowd. You can't go back and hang out at that place anymore. So my advice to Lauren Bobert was, get help, pull yourself together, and don't never go back around the Republican Party or evangelicals ever again. Get with a secular group of people who might can talk you through these things and give you some, 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 some advice and give you a voice of reason. Because honestly, it's, like, it's, it's to the point now where I just I feel bad, if, 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 to be honest with you. It's like, damn, like again, we're gonna, she did something again? What now? And how many times can I say, it's the hypocrisy. That's not getting through. So maybe, maybe just maybe, it's time somebody intervenes. Maybe, maybe whoever is in Lauren Bobert's corner can throw in the towel and say to her, like Eddie Futch did to Joe Frazier during the Thrill in Manila, no one is ever going to forget what you've done here, Lauren. But it's time to go home. <laughs>